Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com and this is Trading Simplified. So what are we going to talk about? Well, I think it's important that I continue with the methodology in action. And as I've recently been talking about quite a bit in my Week in Charts show, I've been working on a piece about Nicholas Darvis who turned $10,000 into $2 million dollars in the 50s and he wrote a book how i made two million dollars in the stock market and i'll probably have a lot more to say about that but anyway one of the criticisms is that he was in the right place at the right time well not everybody made two million dollars out of ten thousand dollars in the mid 50s trading stocks and it reminds me of a gentleman i once met due to some business dealings i was part of a website when we were one of the first websites out there it was us and market watch and I got to meet a lot of wonderful and amazing traders through the process. And one of the traders that we did some business with had made $80 million. And the first thing I did when I, when I met him was like, hey, did you really make $80 million? And he said, yeah, but Dave, there's no way I could do that in today's markets. I was in the right place at the right time. And he went on to say, it was like being in the land of the blind and I had one eye. Well, where I'm going with all this is I think right now, once again, we're in the right place at the right time. And this gentleman made $80 million and the market he was trading was a zero sum game. So not everybody made $80 million in those markets. In fact, because it's a zero sum game, that means that his gains came from other people's losses. So I think we're in the right place at the right time. And I want to continue to show you the methodology in action and i think that's going to explain a lot of things the money management the stock selection and a little bit of the trading psychology to just follow it now housekeeping i do take requests if there's not time or the show doesn't fit the request i could do those in my week of charts which i'm going to start moving those to nights and those are live shows so you can come and ask live questions at those and you can find the information on that at davelander.com if you need to reach me davelander.com slash contact if you want the slides from this show and all the other shows which include the rules for my setups and a bunch of other good stuff go to davelander.com slash stock charts and put your information in and i'll also give you limited access to the members area all three of my books for free and a free market timing course all right, let's talk about the methodology in action. Let's start with the mystery charts. Last week, we had four mystery charts, so let's take a look at those. Here's the first one. You can see that if you go down to the bottom of the screen, we had really nice Landry light, and this is the new plugin, which you can buy. Wait a minute. It's free. You could get it for free at StockCharts.com. Just go to StockCharts.com slash... ACP and you could load the plug in and go to last week's presentation or go watch last week's presentation for more on that. Anyway, you can see nice Landry light down below. I have the parameter set to 30. The moving average is an EMA and my baselines are set to 10. So if you have 10 days of Landry light, I'm going to call that a trend basis, the 30 day EMA. In the mid-90s, I fell in love with the 20-day EMA. I know, you're probably thinking, I want to party with this guy. And I did a lot of research around that. And in more recent times, same sort of research, but I've been applying it more and more to the 30-day EMA. And by the way, keep in mind that I start all my analysis. Every night, I look at a couple thousand charts at least. And that is done by looking at blank charts. And once I begin to analyze a stock, then possibly I might add a moving average here and there. The great thing about the ACP plugin is that it helps you to visualize these things such as Landry Light. So you see this chart above, you're like, well, that's in a pretty good trend. But when you see how long the lows have been above the EMA, it gives you a pretty good clue. And when that stock retraces back to the EMA, notice that the Landry Light goes from green of 80 bars down back to zero. And as I discussed in last week's presentation, Landry light pullbacks are a pretty cool way to trade this. And you could use the 20 EMA lately because the stocks have gone so far. I prefer 
a deeper retracement down to the 30 EMA. So anyway, this is a former mystery chart. This is from last week. Nice uptrend here. You can see we do have a TKO. Go back and watch one of the earlier shows. I think it was episode two where we talked about the TKO. And again, it pulls back to the moving average. You can see the Landry light goes from 80, which is amazing, all the way back down to zero because it intersected the moving average. We have an entry up here, a protective stop down here. And as discussed last week and in the show we did on money management, if you could figure out where to enter, and usually you want to give it some wiggle room above your setup, a little bit of room just to avoid being tr triggered on noise alone. And if you look at the volatility of a stock, if it's bouncing around two or three points, you want to make sure your stop is wider than two or three points. And we've done plenty of shows on the money management. I have a complete module just on money management. Not the most exciting module in the world, but probably the most important next to psychology. Because if you can figure out money management, then you just need to work a little bit on your stock selection. And then, of course, you need a discipline to follow your plan. But anyway, your initial profit target where we take half of our profits, and I have a really good example on that in a minute, is simply your entry plus the entry minus the stop. Well, entry minus the stop is your risk. So we're looking for a one-to-one -one risk to reward. But Dave, doesn't that have a negative expectancy? Yeah, if you're only making the same amount that you're losing, over the long run, you will lose money trading. However, the occasional home run makes it all worthwhile. And I'll show you one or two examples of that. So this chart is FUV, and it did trigger. Now we have another mystery chart reveal. This is NH, it triggered yesterday. In fact, when I put this chart up here, it had not triggered. But you can see that it did have a little bit of Landry light, but it had such a good uptrend, I was okay with it having that Landry light to the downside, that is. And you can see right here, the highs of the bars are less than the moving average, and that's why the Landry light goes from green to red. And we have an entry up here. And again, it triggered yesterday afternoon. Stop down here. So I'll follow up with this one in upcoming shows and along the FUV and any other ones mentioned. We'll see how it all works out. Now here's another reveal. This is BLDP. And in this case, I decided to pass. We did have great Landry Light. We did have the pullback to the EMA, giving us an entry around 1750. And then you can see we started having more and more downside Landry Light over the last week or so. And at this point, I'm thinking it's also a first thrust, which we also discussed in one of the earlier shows. I think episode three, we talked about trend transitions and beginning to form a bow tie to the downside. But this stock may have topped out. Those who are familiar with a little bit more classical technical analysis will notice that it's an inverted cup and handle, which is a bearish pattern. So all of these things made me think that this stock is no longer worthy as a candidate. By the way, sometimes a stock in a deep pullback can continue to roll over and actually set up to the downside. So sometimes a deep pullback can be an inflection point. Go in again and watch the show on transitions for more on that. Now, since we're on this chart, I'm amazed at how many losing trades you can miss by simply waiting for an entry. And sometimes a stock will rally up, get fairly close at an entry, and then turn around and just implode. Well, no capital is put into harm's way. Now, my longer term clients are probably gonna, their eyes would glaze over when I say this because, because I told the story a thousand times. And people are like, well, Dave, why do you beat the dead horse so much? Well, because every time I beat the dead horse and I think to myself, geez, I beat the dead horse too much, the next day, or sometimes the next 10 minutes, within the next 10 minutes, I get an email about the same topic that I've beat the dead horse on. Anyway, I'll get an email on something like this, and it's like, hey, Dave, that stock somewhere around this point where I have the X drawn. Say, like, hey, Dave, that third you recommended, I'm down about 50% in it. What should I do? 
And I'll go back and forth a little bit. Like, I don't think I recommended that stock. It's gone down, as you said, 50%. I do not try to catch a falling knife. I like to buy stocks as they're going up. I like to buy good stocks. Good stocks go up. I avoid bad stocks. Bad stocks go down, okay? And through the money management and entries, I'm able to stay in the good stocks, hopefully, and avoid the bad stocks. A little stock picking going in doesn't hurt either. Making sure you have a really, really nice trend, as evidenced by the Landry Light, or as I like to do, as you've seen in these presentations, draw a big blue arrow. Anyway, long story endless. I'll go back in and say, okay, well, I did recommend that stock, but it never did trigger. And this is a reoccurring theme. People will buy these stocks early, not wait for that trigger, and then hold on to them long past where the stop should have been. It's okay to front run a setup a little bit. Let's say you got an entry at 1750 and the stock's at about 1740. And it's okay with one caveat. Let's say conditions are fantastic like they are right now. Again, I think we're in the right place at the right time. Then it's okay to get in a little early. By the way, somebody pointed out last week in my week of charts or in a YouTube comment, they said, oh, bear walks, a bull walks. What did they say? They said something like a bull walks in to a bear bar. You know, it's like basically saying that the fat lady is singing because I'm talking about being in the right place at the right time. Well, what they failed to realize is that later on in that presentation, I said that me and the other traders in my Facebook group are all talking about the fact that this won't last forever. We have to make hay while the sun shines. These are fantastic conditions with wonderful opportunities. And yes, they will end. Back in the late 90s, I got a little too full of myself and I thought it would last forever. And I ended up fighting the, past, the last war. So what I would caution you is that, yeah, things are great right now, but they won't last forever. But hey, let's make some money while things are still good. Here's another mystery chart reveal. And I decided to pass on this one. Now, you can see we had a really, really good trend. Just look at the chart, draw a big blue arrow. Or you can look at the Landry light below and see that we had about 60-something days where the lows are greater than the moving average. So it certainly qualifies as a pretty good trend. And then you can see we had a little kiss of the moving average. It took off, and then it kissed the moving average one more time. But I decided, because it didn't trigger to go ahead and pass on this. And the more I looked at it, the more I decided to pass. And the reason was I thought it could come down, nail that moving average, and then turn around and go straight back up, sort of bounce off of it. And it did not do that. Now, this is a gold stock, so I decided what, other, what also helps me in the decision process, I should say, is that I also look at all the other sexy sisters or sexy brothers, depends on what you're into. And I guess if you're into both, you're just greedy. But I look at the sexy sisters and sexy brothers. And I say, hey, Dave, is there any stock that you like better than the one you're looking at? In this particular case, I did find one. And I'll show you that one in just one second. The other reason it came off my list was because it didn't bounce off that moving average and take right back off. Notice that it hasn't made any forward progress in a long, long time. And here's the other thing, too. Gold stocks are on fire right now. And if this stock can't rally, then something's wrong with this stock. It's not a good stock. So here's our new mystery chart this week. And by the way, they're not always, all these setups that I love aren't always these Landry Light pullbacks to the 30-day EMA. It just so happens that's the kind of market we're in. These stocks are going pretty much straight up. They're having these really deep corrections, which I love after a stock goes straight up. And they're going down and they're nailing that 30-day EMA. The beauty of this is it helps you to qualify, not quantify, but qualify the setup. And it's easy to recognize. For instance, when I came out with bow ties many, many years ago, I guess 20 years ago, people loved it because it's very easy to recognize the pattern with the moving averages. But again, the indicator doesn't do anything magical. It helps to illustrate what's already in the chart. In this case, and lately, these Landry Light -like pullbacks have been fantastic. That won't always be the case. I can guarantee, like the gentleman who criticized me thinking I was too much of a bull, 
<laughs> it will end someday. By the way, it's funny when the market's selling off and I'm a bear, people are like, you're such a bear. You're always a bear. It's like, no, I'm a bear because the market is going down. When the market is going up, they're like, you're such a bull. It's like, no, I'm a bull because the market is going up. And then this year, it's funny. I've been called a bull. How come I'm always bullish? And then I was called a bear. How come I'm always bearish? Then I was called a bull. How come I'm always bullish? Because we had a bull market, we had a bear market, and then we had another bull market this year. <laughs> it's like all these different things are happening on a compressed time frame. By the way, if you started trading this year, boy, I tell you, it's been trial by fire, huh? You get to go through a bull market, a bear market, and then another bull market. It's fantastic. Anyway, you can see that we did have a nice little pullback to the 30-day EMA after a really, really, really nice trend in here little kiss of that moving average and you can see down below qualifying it we had 30 days of upside landry light okay and then a little kiss of the moving average now my original show that i was going to do this week was everything works better with trend and lately everything has been working better with trend i'm long cryptocurrencies ethereum and bitcoin and ethereum over bitcoin I'm long gold, I am long gold stocks, and I'm long silver, on and off long silver, all because these markets are going up. Everything works better with trend. Now, on the flip side of that, and it would be a bit of a holy grail hunt, but if you could figure out when not to be in a market, then you have sort of figured out a holy grail you would own the world so in other words if you could stay out of markets that weren't trending and had some kind of indicator then you would own the world because every now and then as you know as a trend trader you're going to get chewed up well one thing you can do in addition to the bow ties and go back and look at all those tarzan presentations the good and bad that i did over the last several weeks and you could see like a case like this where you're just chopping around this moving average. Notice you have downside Landry light, no Landry light, no Landry light, upside Landry light, no Landry light, no Landry light, downside Landry light. So when you're seeing this little sawtooth pattern both up and down, then you want to stay out of the market. When you're seeing a nice trend like this and you could draw a big blue arrow on the chart, you need to figure out how can I get aboard this trend it's that simple i never said easy okay i drop a lot of f-bombs in here <laughs> the other day i'm not used to being in the city it's like i lived in the country for 20 something years and we had a little guest house on the property and i worked out of that and it was fantastic because i had my studio on one side my video studio and i did a lot of videos and then i had my trading office on the other and i could do anything i want out in the country well the city's a little bit different but the other day i was getting cream and i fat fingered a couple of orders and i screamed ah f really really loud and i heard someone outside scream ah f back <laughs> anyway i guess you had to be here but it was funny so we got a nice little landry light pullback this is our mystery chart or one of our mystery charts for the week it is a gold mining stock if you look i didn't cover that up so that's what it is, do a little research on your own. It's a thicker one, plenty of shares to trade. Go in and check it out yourself. So we're gonna replace the NAK because I no longer like the action in it with this particular stock because I, I, I like the action a little bit better. By the way, just a side note, these gold stocks and commodity related stocks don't really trade as cleanly as a lot of other stocks and that's because the underlying commodity is very efficient it's a very efficient market a lot of traders hedgers speculators all kinds of people in there fighting it out a lot of derivatives on those products which makes for a bit of a choppy market but hey you know again everything works better with trend plot gld plot slv while you're at it take a look at the cryptos plot btc usd bitcoin us dollar plot ethereum okay those markets can be efficient too and be choppy at times but when they trend it's like bottom so the bottom line is i'm a little bit more lenient with something like a gold stock when it comes to being a, a bit of a perfect setup 
Now, in other cases, I am a bit of a purist to a fact where a lot of times I'll pass on mediocre setups, and then I just have to be willing to watch those stocks take off without me. Now, here we have one more mystery chart, and I'll give you a hint. It's a biotech. And what do we have here? Well, we have a nice uptrend, as evidenced by the blue arrow, or you can look at the Landry Light. We have 60 days of Landry Light. And again, like I said earlier, everything works better with trends. So on the flip side, come over here and notice we have downside Landry Light, no downside Landry Light, upside Landry Light, right here, no Landry Light, upside Landry Light. And then finally, the stock gets going. In fact, it didn't quite kiss the moving average here, but back here would have been a great time to trade this stock too, okay? But now, once again, we have a really, really, really nice trend. Pull back to the 30 EMA. And again, as I said earlier, they don't always pull all the way back to the 30 EMA. Back here, this was right around probably the 20 EMA, if I had to guess. And that's a pattern that I wrote about in the Layman's Guide to Trading Stocks, which, by the way, if you go to davelander.com slash stock charts, put your info in, you'll automatically get a copy of that book too. I'm like Oprah with these books. You get a book, you get a book, you get a book. <laughs> Again, you can see it came down, kiss that moving average. I call the pattern kiss ma goodbye because you're gonna come down here, the stock will go down there, kiss the moving average and hopefully kiss it goodbye, turn around and rally sharply. As you can see here, no Landry light because we are intersecting the moving average, okay? Kind of sounded like uh, Austin Powers there. <laughs> intersecting. So this is our new mystery chart for the week. And I'll give you a hint, it is a biotech. Go in, look at your charts, do your homework, and you probably can find it. Hey Dave, why don't you just give us a name? No, because the object of this show is to teach you how to trade. It doesn't matter what the chart is, right? I wanna teach you how to trade. Give, what's the old saying again? I think I said this last week. Give a man a fish, he eats for the day, teach a man how to fish, he'll sit in a boat and drink beer all week. <laughs> all day, at least, all week, wow. <laughs> Anyway, uh, if you do want to see these ahead of time, I do have a service, so I'm not completely altruistic in all this, but I do a lot, a lot of teaching for free, and some people use that and go off and do really well, and I never make a dime off of that, and I'm, I'm totally cool with that. All of this educational stuff I do, by the way, from a selfish standpoint, it makes me a better trader. I have an article on why I teach trading and how that benefits both you and me, and I'll have to dig that up. Now let's talk about the best, the missed, or the worst trade of the week. So this was a position trade, and if you look over here, this is my Landry list. This is the research that I publish every night. And this was not an official recommendation, but I decided to go ahead and take it. By the way, the spreadsheet that you're seeing with those official recommendations at the bottom, that's what I call my model account, and my goal there is to show that the methodology can work and then the landry list which you see off to the left which sometimes they might not be any stocks in this sometimes they might be 20 or 30. and right now we're having 20 or 30 because the market conditions are that good and there's that many trending stocks out there but anyway those are ancillary setups and other setups that might be a little bit more aggressive but everything in the list is usually set up or could set up really 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 soon and you can see the nak was set up on that particular day, particular day that was published on 728 or 729 and the DOYU I thought was a pretty cool looking pullback and I like the four setups that I have below as better for the model account but I did like this DOYU and I did take this trade what do we have once again we have incredible nice upside Landry light okay down here you can see and then we have a little kiss of the moving average and it actually dipped slightly below one little bar of downside land light no big deal and notice there is a little fake out in between i call that pattern a trend pivot pullback and that's an okay pattern to trade if you are newer to trading that would be a good pattern to trade unfortunately a lot of times you wouldn't get that fake out or you would miss a lot of trades but you would be a little bit more accurate in your trades if you did that and i think the trend pivot pullbacks are in I do have them in one of my books. I forget which one, but you'll get them for free, so you can check that out. Anyway, a little kiss of that moving average, actually slightly more than a kiss. You can see it went down, had one day below the 30. No big whoop. It's just making a little bit of a correction. And by the way, I'm seeing this as, see, I learn as I teach too. What do we have back here? Upside Landry light. No 
Landry light. Upside Landry light. No Landry light. Okay. Downside Landry light. So you do not want to be trading the market back here. Okay. Figure out how to stay out of this and only trade this. Again, we need to see if we can get. I need to talk to the programmer and see if we could put Tarzan in here. You know, it's a little. Just put good or bad. We'll, we'll see if we get Tarzan incorporated into this. But this bad. This good. Nice uptrend, right? Anyway, so this is what happened so far. Knock on wood. I got an entry here. It rallied up. And then I took half of my profits yesterday. Now, overnight, it hit 20. But I have to live with that, okay? Because overnight, it could have went back to 11. And I could have scratched out and remained in the trade. So you have to plan your trade and trade your plan. So this turned out to be the best trade of the week so far. And just to show you that I actually took the trade, I have what I call my model account where it's roughly about 100K and I'll take snapshots out of this account for these trades just to show you that I'm actually taking the trades. By the way, I will never show you a trade that I do not intend to take personally or have taken personally. And if I do, if I find a great trade or missed trade or something I didn't take, I'll point it out ahead of time. So here's the trailing stop on that. We're up to break even, and now it is a free position or free rolling, as Charlie Kirk calls it when he saw my money management. So hopefully, and I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully I'll be able to ride this stock for a long, long time. Now here's one I talked about last week in the week of charts. It was TLSA, Tiziana Life Sciences. And you can see in this particular case, I don't think it pulled all the way back to the 30, but it was a pretty good looking setup nonetheless on a daily chart. I'm often asked, hey, Dave, can I use your patterns on a five minute chart? Yeah, sure. Can I use your patterns on a weekly chart? Absolutely. Patterns are fractal. What happens in one time frame happens in others. So anyway, we got a nice little pullback here on a daily chart. And lately, because everything has been working out so great, I decided that in some cases, I'm going to go in and take some intraday trades, not necessarily a day trade, but an intraday trade, look to get in and hold on for as long as I can during the day, hopefully in not too long after the open and ride the stock out all day long, not in and out all day, in and out, in and out, out all day, like the rat going for the cocaine, but rather get in, hold on as long as possible. Either stopped out, hit the profit target, and trail that stop. So this is what it looked like intraday nice little uptrend as you can see nice little pullback in here and i didn't get in until here and the reason was that i was in a webinar when this was happening and i actually had a loose eye on the screen and rather than stopping the webinar and restarting i just waited and it nearly killed me but i was able to get in here it rallied up nicely i took my initial profits right here trailed the stop higher and got stopped out. Now you'll notice I did give up two points intraday, but hey, that's okay. I got out much higher than I got in. So you know what? Better than a poke in the eye is what I say on that. Now be really careful if you start day trading. I would strongly urge you not to day trade, but right now there are a lot of intraday opportunities. I'm probably doing a little bit too much trading Yesterday, I was absolutely exhausted by the end of the day. I'm 55 years old. I am way too old to be day trading, but it is a lot of decisions to be made. And when we get back to psychology, I'm going to talk about what decisions do to, your, to you, to your body, to your mentality, and it really does wear you out. So you got to be really, really careful if you're going to take these intraday trades. Now, let's take a look at a dead money report. In this particular case, this was a former mystery chart you can see rallied up nicely we had an entry here a stop down here an initial profit target here and it went sideways for a long 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 time but that's okay as i often say i thought it was my speak but it's actually ralph akampor the bigger the base the bigger the launch into space a lot of people see this and say dead money i'm going to lose money in this trade it's not going anywhere it's dead money well let's take a look at what happened notice that over the last week or so it's begun to rally, and we've had a nice rally higher. Okay, my time is up. I want to thank everybody for watching. Again, if you need to reach me, use these links below. Thank you, everybody, and may the trend be with you. 
Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.